That's Jody. That's John. One of the Wisleys. <coughs> we were doing our two month review of our new RV. Which is a? What is it? It's an Entrada. East to West Entrada 2600 DS. On a Ford chassis. Ford chassis. With what kind of motor? The Godzilla of motors, a 7.3 liter V8. Nice. People want to know, so let's tell them. Okay, go. On the outside, we're starting outside. Bumper to bumper. Bumper to bumper. Things we like. Love the engine. Tons of power. Uh, getting on the freeway actually isn't a huge issue. You can get up to speed pretty quickly. It rides pretty well actually on the freeway. I'm surprised for as big as it is compared to our Travato. Uh, this was a big step up in size. Rides pretty smoothly. Travato was 21 feet. This, this is 29. 29, so yeah. yeah. Moving along the outside, here's one of the things that I absolutely hate that someone at East to West needs to hear me, hear me. <laughs> this is stupid. Yeah, the this condensation is the drain. drain from the air conditioner. Air conditioner. The spout it, is right there and it drips down. So if I open this door, the entire control panel for the windows and power locks gets wet. Right. So if you have your AC on, you cannot open the driver's side and or passenger side doors without causing damage to your vehicle. Not for any length of time. You this gotta hop in. This is stupid. Yeah, it's a horrible design. Okay. That spout should be anywhere else. Anywhere else. It could be right back here. It could be right up here. There are options, people. Think about this. Yes. Okay. Can I get a gripe over here? Sure. The mirror? You want to go over there? Oh, the mirror. So. <laughs> oh, the mirror. <laughs> we got this, and it was the mirror itself was loose. So it does have some um, Allen wrench bolts, yep. small, tiny bolts that we had to tighten severely because the whole thing would just go unk, and you weren't looking at anything useful as right. you drove but then there's more this piece slides into the arm and this mirror for some reason was not i don't know if it's not connected correctly it wasn't built correctly who knows as you drive and the vehicle shakes this works its way out, so you have a gap maybe this big, and you have about that much left before your mirror actually falls off. And all of a sudden you notice it going 60 down the freeway, and you're like, oh crap, my mirror's gonna fall off. So you have to stop and actually use a hammer to hammer it back in. So we have super glued it. We haven't done a long drive yet. We'll be testing that on Thursday as we head to Buffalo. Fingers crossed the super glue worked. Otherwise, we're going to need a plan B. Plan B is every couple hundred miles to we get out. We stop and hammer the mirror back in. get the rubber in. hammer and just knock it back in. But that's that needs to be addressed. That does. That I don't know. Unless that's a one-off. Yeah. It's just us. It, it could be. It's hard to know. Right. Um, working our way down, I will point out that this slide, which is the smaller of the two slides, these teeth are actually plastic. Right. Hasn't been an issue yet. But over time, I don't really see how that's going to wear super well. Yeah, that's true. But uh, again, no issues so far, to be fair. I will say uh, the locks on our outside The locking storage mechanisms on all of the storage. Suck. Yeah, they're, they're cheap. I get it. You know, it's not meant to be high security, but for, I don't know, five bucks more, we could have gotten some decent locks. Right. I will say the amount of outside storage has been really nice. We have this one, which in particular is kind of cool. We'll show you when we go inside. This goes in, you can access it from the inside, yeah. which is nice because you, those things that you use a lot, you can just grab very easily, which is super nice. We have a very long uh, storage area underneath which is great. We have like our chairs in there, um, long stuff. Uh, we have a broom. 
the uh, scrub brush that I've just bought so we can clean the top. So that'll be able to go in there. So it's nice that we have one that's very long. This one back here, we keep our hoses, which is convenient because our city water connection, black tank flusher right here. And this is also our drain point. Um, so being able to have our hoses right in this area is very nice, I will say. We keep our stinky slinky in the bumper, which is cool. This pops off. Ooh. And then... Got the slinky right in there? Yeah, so that's kind of a nice feature. Um, it makes it, you know, we don't have to mix that with other stuff that you don't want it near. So I will say that has been nice. The other thing that is nice for us, and this is very common on class C's, but coming from a class B van, the fresh water fill is so much easier. So you unscrew this, you stick this in and you fill it. It's a thousand times easier than filling the water in our class B van. So why? Well, in the class B van, you had to open the back doors to get to the water connection. So if it was freezing cold out or raining out, you're in the elements. Well, what about a class B van that doesn't have the water hookup inside the doors? Remember, they, they used well, to have I've it on the outside. I've not had one. Right, but you've seen those, right? They had them on the outside? Yeah, I mean, I guess then it would be the same. Yeah. But for us, this was a nice change. That's true. Um, I will say this color picks up a lot of dirt. It does. Um, we did not get a ladder, by the way. We did not. This is part of the ladder shortage. Yes. So that is a bit disappointing because we did have to go on the roof to take a look at the air conditioning. And so we had to... Oh, did it come on you? Yeah. I'm sorry. Borrow. I blew a little spider off of the... Because I guess I'm under a spider tree and yeah. there's a little spider crawling on my phone. I blew it off and it landed on Jody. So to get on the roof, we had to borrow a ladder um, when we were at John's uncle's house. Shout out to Keith, Elaine, and Todd, who's the one who actually got up on our roof. And the reason for that was because we were getting condensation drip inside the van, which is not cool from the air conditioner. Right. But I guess the reason for that is because I called the 1-800 number. Um, if you're in a place with high humidity, you it's are going to get a drip inside the van. I think you just have to deal with that. And it was more than just like an occasional drip. So It was a constant steady drip. Yeah. So that's another thing on our list. You can see this slide, which is our bedroom, uh, which comes out much further than the living room slide, it has a completely different mechanism. This is metal, um, and it's a little zipper style um, slide. We do have the leaf barriers up top on both of our slides. Yeah. Very nice feature. We don't have to get up there it out which would be impossible for us since we don't have a ladder so <laughs> well we can buy them they sell them at stores yeah but that is super nice feature yeah. not to have to worry about getting up there every time you want to close your slides and making sure there's not a bunch of leaves and stuff stuck up there more outside storage other two um, areas and then our propane tank fill um, I have to say, we have not been in cold weather. It's been warm since we got the RV. But the, so we've been using the propane for heating our water uh, for showers and, you know, cooking and washing, and the propane for the stove. We've filled it once, and we're still, I think, at two thirds full. So yeah. it's very efficient. Um, we don't find ourselves filling it a lot. Obviously, when weather gets colder, our furnace runs off propane. So check back with us. We'll tell you how efficient it is or isn't. We've used the canopy a couple times. Yeah. It's great. Everything's, you know, no problem with that. Um, I will say that these marine grade speakers from the outdoor here. Mm. Wait, that doesn't sound right. I will say that these marine grade speakers here on the outside are not good at all they're not great i mean we listened to some music and it was okay but you know it's, you're not having any parties no you're not having concert quality music by any stretch all right let's um, talk about the there's power out here we haven't actually used that we probably should test it 
some yeah. point, make sure that works. But let's talk about the lovely door. Let's talk about the door. So I'm going to start with a shout out to John. Me? You. Ooh, nice. Who installed this keyless lock. This is amazing. You enter your code, you can lock, you can unlock. You don't have to take keys with you. Because keep in mind, the key that operates this door is different than the keys that operate your driver and passenger side doors. So you wind up with a lot of keys. Well, of course it is. So having the keyless entry, very nice. Yes. Okay. Now. And you can, it comes with a key fob too, where you can, yes. you can push a lock symbol, push an unlock symbol, and you're good to go. Good to go. So that's been lovely. It lights up at night. Great. This door is a piece of shit. <laughs> I'm just going to call it what it is. Okay. And I don't say that lightly, but this is by far the absolute worst feature on this entire RV. And the reason I say that is because we use this dozens of times a day. It's the only way in and out easily of the RV. And it is super hard to close. It is twice as hard to open. The screen door does not stay connected to the door the way it's supposed to like this. See how it clicks in so you can open it and close it it comes apart all the time i would like to interject and say it has nothing to do with the fact that i changed out that lock because system. it did all of that it's actually better since we changed the lock and that's saying something because yeah. it's still absolutely horrendous it's like they didn't measure right they did not measure right that that is true do you want to check out the inside let's go inside Welcome inside. So, we'll start at the front with the cab. I find it relatively easy to get in and out of the cab from here, like going into the cab from the RV, coming from the cab to the RV. It's also easy for me. I'm just not very graceful. Right. John has a harder time, and fair enough, he's six foot three. Uh, so, it is a little harder to it's get like down. It's like a gazelle on ice. You know? Yeah. Uh, but it's nice to be able to go, you know, easily back and forth. I find the cab actually pretty comfortable. The seats are a hundred times more comfortable than the seats in our Travada. Well, they are, but they're still lacking for me. They're, they're not great, but they are so much better than the seats in our Travado. And I often, as he is driving, I sit up here and work. I have a little lap desk. I think it's a great spot actually i enjoy working up there it's comfortable for me i have so, a couple gripes the yes. stereo is not great we did not yes. get a touch screen it's just an aftermarket sony radio that's you know 199 bucks they didn't give us a nice 10 inch touch screen like a lot of the uh, a lot of the rvs are getting now this is our rear view camera Right, um, which, which is not great either. That, that, that camera is not great. The camera in the Travado, the backup was camera, much better. was a, a much better quality. I will yeah. say that. This one does switch when you put your blinkers on. It changes to side cameras. And it stays there for like 20 seconds it for some reason. It stays there too long. Way too long. It, once it switches back, when it goes back to the rear view, that delay is pretty significant from a safety standpoint, right. I will say. Right. But... Um, you know, it's it's okay. Also, being 6'3", you know, these chairs, I would prefer more of a captain's chair, like in a Class A. Obviously, I can't have that kind of room in this because it's a Class C, and it's a Class C for a reason. Yes. But, um, you know, if we ever upgrade to something like that, obviously, I'll have more leg room and, and be more comfortable on long drives. Yeah. But one of our rules is we don't drive more than a couple, two or three hours a day. Right. So that uh, it doesn't feel like work. We have this upper bunk. We do not use it for sleeping. No. But it's a great storage space for us, actually. Uh, it's worked out nicely. We keep our privacy curtain that goes around here. We fold it up and put it up there. I keep my work backpack up there. We keep our tech bag up there. Uh, some jackets for quick grab. And we're probably not like most people. We're minimalists. We don't pack yeah. everything to the, you know, to the hill because it's like, I, I don't 
you don't need it. We were minimalist when we had a house. Yeah. So. <laughs> so, um, it's nice to have that storage up there. Uh, this RV has a ton of storage for its size. I, we have storage up here. We keep a first aid kit there so it's easy to grab and, you know, just in case if someone gets hurt either inside or outside, it's easy to grab. That's, that's the, the Furion. You want to look at that real quick? Oh, uh, yes. We've this only used it a couple times. The sound system right. for inside and it also controls the outside speakers. Inside, I think it sounds pretty good. Well, these speakers are better. Yeah, it connects to your phone, you know, Bluetooth, right. so you can do Pandora. We have Sirius radio, so we can connect to that. Uh, so that's nice, actually. It's a nice little feature. I mean, I could probably live without it. Like, it doesn't super enhance my life, but it's a nice feature. And then right above your head, the smoke alarm. I'm not sure if that actually works. <laughs> I tried to test it the other day, and I got no sound whatsoever, so I might have to check the batteries on that. But it did go off. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's, it's weird. weird. This thing has went off a couple times, too, down yeah, here. That's our comment carbon monoxide monitor it's a piece of shit um it's loose yeah and so we'll be driving down the road and they'll just, just go off. off yeah <laughs> and there isn't i know you're thinking like hey there's carbon monoxide but we've checked there isn't it gets it bounces too much and there's a loose wire somewhere it's on the list that makes it go off it's on the list let's talk about our control panel let's talk about that okay it sucks. Okay. Now. Well, no, the control panel's fine. It's just the sensors on the tanks are, yeah. are I don't know. So, black tank reads two-thirds. Black tank reads two-thirds no matter what we do, pretty much. I empty it. It's still there. There's probably something stuck. Occasionally, if I flush, I can get it to go back to empty, but then it returns and me almost immediately to two-thirds. So, it's not great. Um, they're not super accurate. None of them are. I so realize that. So it's a piece of crap. You see what I did there? Yeah. I realize it's a it's a guesstimate. It's an estimate. It's a guide. We get it. But I just don't feel like it should be that hard to make some tank sensors that tell you where you really are. Right, and don't do it in thirds. I mean, do it in like you know. Let's quarters? get a quarters. Eighths would be great. So the fridge is great. How do you like the fridge? Fridge is really nice. Tons of space, uh, especially compared to our Class B. Right. But this is a really big refrigerator. Um, for this size RV, I feel like this is really nice. We've added, you know, some little bins just so stuff doesn't slide around as much. Right. But it really has a lot of space. And then we have a big freezer as well. Yeah. Um, so... I, I'm really happy with the fridge. I think it's worked well. There is one spot in the back corner of the fridge where things freeze. Yes. That's where you put things if you want them to get really cold. Yes. Um, so it is what it is. But overall, I think it's worked well. On a side note, this is right here is where we got the condensation drip from the uh, air conditioner when it gets too humid outside. I will say this. The AC, we only have one, which for 29 feet is good. It actually cools the whole RV down. No, oh, yeah, it does. Especially, uh, van, especially when I close this off. Right. We have this whole area closed and we have these curtains closed. Yes. And it in does a good van, job. In the AC did not cool the entire no, van. it did not. It was back over the bed and it kept the bed area very cold. But the front of the van was cool-ish. Right. But never comfortable. Uh, this has enough power to cool the entire RV. We were which concerned. Is very nice. About we that. were. That yeah. was actually one of our major concerns when we bought this. And we have been very, very pleased. Again, as I mentioned, the storage, tons of storage. These are all cabinets. These drawers pull out fully. So, very long, tons of storage under both. I have cabinets all through the kitchen, drawers. For me, storage in this RV is is very ample. Very ample. How about the uh, oven and the uh, cooktop? Cooktop is great. It's propane, which I really like. I think it 
it cooks more evenly. It's what I'm used to at home. And we got a convection microwave, which has been kind of fun. Yeah. We didn't have that in our van. It's nice to be able to bake things. Uh, we cooked meatballs in there. It, it's a nice addition for us because yeah. it's something we didn't have before. I will say, however, that the placement of the microwave... I wonder what's up there. Let me look. <laughs> For someone who is five foot two, yeah. this is hard. Yeah. And it Especially if there's something really hot in there and you gotta right. be careful. So because it's a convection yeah. and I can cook things up to almost four hundred degrees, yeah. not being able to really reach is an issue. I'm the guy that gets stuff out. We bought an ottoman, which doubles Ooh. as a step stool for me wow. in order to use the microwave. Now, I realize that I am short. However, most people would struggle with the microwave that high. It's just, it's too high. Well, maybe most women. I think a 5 foot 10 man, which is the average height for men in the U.S., that would be hard. Okay, fair just enough. Saying. Got it. Uh, sink is great. I love this sink. It is huge. It is great for washing dishes, doing prep work for cooking. The little pull down sprayer is nice. This whole setup is actually very nice. Although you gotta be careful with that sprayer because it will come unscrewed. Yes. It hasn't happened on you yet, but no. These little jinky mini blinds. Yeah, they can go. They could just go in the garbage. I don't know why you gave them to us. TV. TV, very nice. Speakers on TV, very crappy. We have solved that problem by adding a soundbar, yes. a Bose soundbar. But if you have the AC running and you're watching TV without the soundbar, you better have the subtitles on because you're not hearing whatever the show is. But that say. might be the case with just being in an RV, you know. So plenty of storage there and behind the TV. Yep. Yeah. Tons of storage. Again, storage is, is very good in here. House fan is nice. We always have it on. That's why it's so dirty. Yep. This is how the outside cabinet that I referenced. It's a pass-through. It's a pass-through. So it we keep like our toolkit in here, which is nice because you need that on the outside. But we often need, we're like, hey, I need a screwdriver. So it's super nice to be able to grab it. Right. We keep our vacuum and our broom in there so I can use it very easily inside that I don't have to take up inside storage um, to keep it. So that, I think, is a really nice feature. It's a jackknife sofa. It's okay. It's not the most no. comfortable in no, the world. No, it's not okay. It's, it's not comfortable. Sitting like this yeah. is way too upright. I know. You can't sit like this for any length of time to watch television. So we always lay it down. We lay it down and take one of the pillows one of these from the dinette and put it along the back and create um more of a sofa right we would love to be able to trade this out and put in some recliners or two theater seats or yeah. some kind of something that's what i mean so we're probably going to work on that wait you're getting a little too far we forgot something what did we forget so let's uh -huh. talk about quality control for a second well <laughs> yes. So shall we? Shall we? So see what these brackets look like here. That hold these uh these little holds the back of the dinette to the wall. Right. So you're supposed to have four, right? Yes. So one on there. This side, you can see them. One there. One here. But guess what? One was missing right here. So we had to buy our own and put it on there because this back was coming off. Yes. John leaned back one day and went way back. A little too far. So uh a little quality control note there for you. I will also say, again, I get this is a short person problem, but the table, um, because I work at the table. Yeah. It is. And eat there. Yeah. yeah. The table is slightly too high. Or the seats are slightly too low. Call it what you will. So for me to sit here and type for any length of time is not comfortable. So I have a cushion. That's why I got her the cushion. That raises me up a bit so that I can sit there and work. I work fully 
I work full time remotely. This cushion doesn't, doesn't stay up, no, which is another issue. Up, doesn't. But uh, so that is just a minor thing, but it's a thing again. To go back to the kitchen storage, pots, pans, under the sink, drawers, our pantry, pantry everything lots is of pantry room. sufficient. Um, I've not had issues with that. That stuff's just on the counter because I'm using it tonight. But I have room, more than enough room, to put that away. What is this box up here? That is our WineGuard router. Okay. So that's how we get our Wi-Fi. And there's the on-off button there. Yeah. Um, again, quality control. Ooh, do that again. That's a great sound. Yeah. So that's the sound this cabinet makes every time you open it. Look at all this glue on the back. All that glue, and it still makes that sound. For that mirror. It's great to have this cabinet. Obviously, we keep uh, almost all our clothes in oh, this one yeah, cabinet. Pretty much. Um, so it's very nice. I love the mirror. Don't yeah. get me wrong. It is very nice it's to have a, a very, mirror like very that. It's a very janky yeah. thing. We have these drawers, which we use for socks and underwear, which is nice. We each have a drawer. Isn't hers. So that part has been great. In the bedroom. There is another storage closet with a mirror, which... That's not as bad of a sound. No. So clearly this one was constructed properly. Lots of room. Lots of room. Uh, we just have winter clothes in there right now because it's warm. Little, little, uh, little cubby. Cubby down there. We have nightstands with power and USB. And a vent. On both sides. Yep. Let's talk about the bed. Oh no, let's talk about the bed. So, the mattress, uh, so when our slide comes in, we have to flip our mattress up. Yep. So it's a foldable mattress. So that does limit, you know, the quality of mattress that you can get. Of course. The one that came with this, eh, it's not the worst right. RV mattress that we've laid on. We bought a four inch foam topper to put on top of it. We did. We have a, uh, you know, a little foam here that we have on top. Uh, so after we added that foam, I actually sleep really well on this. Right. That wasn't the big problem. Actually. The no. problem was every time any, either of us got on the bed, it would creak. It would, it this sounded like it wood. was gonna, it was gonna break so you'll because they gave us a quarter inch piece of plywood. Yes. So However, it bowed, it bowed like big time. This, yeah, within the first two days, sure, right. So we traded it out. We got a three-quarter inch piece of plywood, and we covered it in vinyl. Covered it in vinyl, sticky from, from Amazon. Vinyl. So, because the other thing is, our mattress was getting full of splinters, right, from the plywood, because it was literally just a piece of plywood that wasn't even sanded smooth. It's like they had to finish the bed. Like within an hour, so they just grabbed a small piece of plywood, yep. and they tacked it to the bottom, and they called it a day. So we replaced. We should that. get into this this business right here of yeah. making people's beds better. This has been the best improvement. The bed does not make a single sound nope. when you get on it's or off. So it. solid, it slides smoothly. The mattress slides really well. No more splinters. Yep. That was a huge upgrade for us. Really. A huge improvement. Yep. Huge improvement. There's more been. storage over the bed, which we actually don't even use. No. I will say one of the things that they could get rid of, and I understand, like, it's a it's a nice thing, but you'll see on the side of the bed there's these cup holders. Never used once. Never used once in the and you issue, get rid of that area. It, there's it's, four inches of just... It's yeah. hard for the mattress to slide under once we've added our foam topper, and you have to add a foam topper. There is no one just sleeping on the mattress that comes with this RV. No. No one is doing that. Everyone's adding a topper. So it makes the space for the mattress to slide under very tight. So I would say just get rid of those. Right. Like, who's laying in bed and needs a cup holder? Like... I'll probably get lots of comments from people who are like... You know who's, oh, who's doing that is the guy that's drinking a beer watching his TV right here on this wall. Which we don't have. Which we don't have. But we could have. Yeah. Um, that window's not a real opening window. It's just it the looks. It would be, I think, so nice if this window opened. Uh -huh. Because that would create a pass-through breeze in right. here. That one opens, and it does help. But if this window opened... 
that would be a game changer on days where it's slightly warm but you could get away with keeping the windows open i agree this would help a lot how do you like the thermostat um the thermostat is okay no it's not it's, it's, it's a piece a, of crap it's a little touchy it switches very easily from uh fahrenheit to celsius but yeah. we have finally figured out how to switch it back but it's in a horrible place it is in an odd place because if you're doing bed things, you can hit that. I hit it all the time with my shoulder blade. Right, and it ch it changes, right. so it is a little weird. The placement is a bit weird. Lastly, the bathroom. The bathroom, and it's a bathroom. Um, for you know, for a big guy, you know, the pooping position isn't bad. It's uh, it is what it is, you know. I think I'm overall pretty pleased with the bathroom. The only thing you'll notice, we have our towel hanging over the shower. And that's really because there's nowhere else to hang a towel right. where it will dry. We tried putting a towel bar up, but nothing will stick to this kind of stuff. We would have and to screw it in. kind and of I in your way. Like, yeah, I don't really want to screw anything in that wall. Right, but even because as you're standing here, you know, depending on the height of your towel bar, right. um, you're gonna, whacking your head. Right, I'm sure I would so. do that a few times. The medicine cabinet's nice, though. It's a very yeah, big... Yeah, medicine cabinet is very big, actually. We have a ton of stuff in there. And then they give you the, and the one down below. And there's a lower cabinet. So. Um, we keep our hair dryer, and we keep it plugged in, yeah. which is nice. Um, and we, we keep our... We bought one of those floor um, pa the toilet in. paper yeah. holders because it's just easier than screwing one in or finding a place to put one yeah. but and it actually stands up and i will say i thought for sure it would fall over john right. was sure it wouldn't and he was right it has never fallen over i've been right about a couple things in my life so overall bathroom is pretty good i'm pretty happy with the bathroom shower works pretty well the pull out door for the shower is nice have there any issues with no. any of that knock no. on wood it's been good uh, overall what would you rate this uh, out of 10 this entire experience this entrada east to west i would say it's an eight out of ten quality six and a half out of ten space and storage nine out of ten so overall i'd probably say eight out of ten i think that's fair yeah because I mean, they've all some really great features and they've all got their issues no matter they what they do you're talking uh, quality about. is not an east to west thing our Travato had just as many quality issues as this does. I think they all do, especially right now. So, you know, that to me is not surprising. I even I was even told by a dealer, once you drive, I mean, they're made to start breaking down as soon as you drive them. They're, yeah. It's a house on wheels, so it's going to yes. rattle. Everything's going to... And we put a lot of miles on ours. We, we do. We're full-time. Full full-time so, travelers. We're gypsies. But the space that we've gained in this has been so nice oh from the travato yeah yeah and i will say i think overall the layout of this has worked really well for us it's, we, we it's do smart like the floor plan overall yeah it, it has served us very well so far so if you have any questions uh let us know in the comments yeah. any feedback we appreciate it don't forget to subscribe yep and uh, click that bell too that'll help Ding. otherwise we'll see you guys down the road peace Demonstrating the door. You almost fell out that time. Gotta use the shoulder. <laughs> and that is not the hardest that that door is to open. No, it's that not. was like a intermediate difficulty level. You had it loose from before. Yes.